Good morning from sunshiny, beautiful Arizona. Greg Meekin, um, are you in? Are you in studio here? Can you hear me? Uh, I am out of the green room and I'm in the studio and I'm ready to go. How is my sound, uh, Val? You are coming through loud and clear, uh, nice and crisp. It sounds great. Nice. I'm a little hoarse this morning. A little horse been talking since about four this morning, so I'll uh, I'll plan on having you uh, you and uh, our guest do most of the talking. How about that, huh? How about that? <laughs> we'll see where it goes. I'm excited. Uh, today is really special. This is an interview that I've uh, been looking forward to for quite some time because it's it's a game changer for anybody that takes the time and and listens today uh, because this book. Um, called Bravery and Blinders by our guest today, author Janelle Lamb, um, is one of the most important books in my arsenal of resources for community tools. And it's one of those books that I believe should be um, in every library in our county and country. And it's a great book for moms that have their ducks in a row and it's a great book for young women that have moral standards and it's kind of like she's went ahead of us paved the path a little bit and it's just it's full of tools I I keep it where I keep my cookbooks in the kitchen handy so I can kind of run to it for sometimes a little a dose of pick me up and feel good and remind me, Hey Val, you're not alone in this. I I, I love that. So it's a really powerful, impactful book. So we're going to get into that and talk all about stuff. What's on your agenda, Greg? What are you, what are you uh, hoping to accomplish today? Wow. Uh, it's a pretty long list. I'll tell you, I don't know if it's uh, the same with you, Val, but uh this is as crazy busy a time as, as maybe I've seen in 20 years. Um, lots of stuff going on, lots of big issues going on, uh, lots of home front issues going on. Uh, I just probably would introduce this as saying this is, this is so exciting to me uh, to have uh, Mrs. Lamb on today. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, as you mentioned, you're a, a big fan of her book. Uh, she has two wonderful books out and um, they indeed are game changers. Uh, they indeed are, uh, should be required reading <clears throat> for all high school kids, especially graduates. Can you imagine Val? Uh, required reading? So I like um, that. I, I'm really, really excited because this is an exclusive interview. Um, uh, uh, uh Janelle Lamb and, of course, her, her uh, husband, <laughs> Sheriff Mark Lamb, by the way, uh, who just announced his U.S. Senate run, of course, which we'll, uh, I'm sure, be talking about later. Uh, he's a very, very busy person. Uh, she is out of state right now, so uh, she is, she's accommodating us by taking some nice time uh, to visit. And uh, it, it truly is an exclusive interview uh, to Val Olson News. To, to Val Olson, Val Olson News and, and, and Twitter Spaces, which we have done one full show before, Val, which a lot of folks don't know. Uh, there are clips. I think there are about eight or ten clips on my YouTube channel uh, from your previous show uh, with uh, with Mrs. Lamb. And it was, they're fabulous, fabulous clips. So it's an exclusive interview. I really look forward uh, to catching up uh, with Janelle. Uh, to find out what's gone on in her life, of course, in the last month or two. It's been a crazy world for everybody. Uh, and indeed, a crazy, I'm sure it's been a crazy month or two uh, for Janelle. So I really, really look forward to this conversation. I want to let, I want to let everybody know just how, <clears throat> just how, as I say, exclusive. This is a kitchen table chat conversation, a dining room chat uh, with a woman who is, uh, as she has said uh, very often, behind the scenes, uh, behind the scenes in an insane world, uh, she is a uh, uh, she practices follow ship, follow ship, uh, just like uh, my expression, comfort ponies, which I hope that comes up in the show. So, uh, Val, I really appreciate your time here. I really appreciate uh, the uh, these radio shows that you put on, because <clears throat> indeed, uh 
this might be the last platform where things are just open and honest and uncensored and un unwoke, if you will. How about that? Unwoke, Val. Uh, I'll turn it back to you a little bit. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, Janelle will be logging on soon. She's in the green room, but she'll be logging on soon. Again, she's out of state. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to be about uh, 40 minutes after the hour, uh, at the, you know, after the first of the hour here, as far as length of show, because she definitely has some, uh, she has some commitments uh, to do later on today. So kind of back to you on that, Val. I'm just really looking forward to chatting with uh, both of you. For those of you that are listening across uh, the United States, maybe Alberta this morning or internationally, and you want to know more about where to get this great book that I'm talking about, you can log on to sheriffswife.com and you get a sneak peek. She kind of shares her story with you. Uh, and there's a spot where you can contact her and you can purchase your book, sheriffswife.com. She has two books. I read the first book and I loved it. I'm like, this is so good. Um, I don't, I don't know how anybody could follow up on this cause it's just, it's that good. It, it read like her personal diary and I just wanted the next chapter. I wanted to hear more. I didn't want the book to stop and it just kind of worked like that. Uh, I timed it without even knowing it. Uh, the next book came to me, uh, a few months later, she was ready to release bravery and blinders. And from page one, uh, I could not put the book down and I planned on just kind of you know oh it it's a great cover I'm just going to read page one and I'll put it down and I'll pick it up tomorrow and I found uh, on page one I was hooked and that doesn't happen I mean it happens in movies sometimes or great tv show but it's been a long while since a book has come along that just kind of hits you between the eyes touches your heart engages your brain and I'm like whoa um by the time I hit chapter four, that's chapter four of Bravery and Blinders. If you're like, well, I can only get one book right now, I'm going to say it. Go ahead and get Bravery and Blinders. Um, I was like, whoa, she is in my Kool-Aid. <laughs> um, talks a lot about procrastination, Greg, and uh, the impacts. You know, that it's it, like this book is for people that have their ducks in a row. And what that means to me is they're living life at a level where they're okay and ready to get challenged about where they want to go and how to, you know, achieve some of those, those goals, like those secret inside internal dreams. And so it was a real like fork in the road for me uh, at chapter four. That's when I had to decide okay, um, I'm going to have to battle myself here a little bit. Um, processing through the book into chapter seven, it, it, I was just, I cried my eyes out. And I know you will too. If you're a wife and a mom and you've ever felt you don't measure up, maybe not good enough, um, not smart enough, and maybe fed up a little bit, not sure what to do, how to do things. It it really connects you to um, just a place of your heart and your mind and your whole life colliding all in one. So I went into Chapter Seven last night, um, and i I made it two chat two pages in, and I just cried. I cried my eyes out, <laughs> and. Uh, that's what this book does. You know, it's, it's so real. It's so raw. It's uncut. It's so personal. You will be changed chapter by chapter for the better. So I am thrilled and honored uh, that Janelle Lamb is on our show today as, as our guest. And again, if you're just tuning in, thank you for joining. Follow along. We're multitasking moms. So log on to our website, sheriffswife.com. And and as we're talking and sharing, yeah, you can go to the contact button. She's the type of woman you can reach out to, and she messages you back. It's so special. Janelle, uh, I think she, we're ready to bring her in, Greg, from the green room. So just give me a second here. There we go. Janelle, are you there? 
just connecting. Hi, Janelle. Good morning, Val. Good morning, Good morning Greg. <laughs> hello, hello. Nice to have you Hi, on, guys. Janelle. I'm so grateful you're having me back. Thank you so much. I believe it was last September, Janelle, you were on the show and we just caught up with you about your first book that was out, The Sheriff's Wife. And amazing book. I mean, I was blown away. <clears throat> I, I would say book one is kind of like, if you want encouragement, that is the book. And then your second book rolled out shortly after. And if you want to be inspired to really <laughs> take yourself on, uh, Bravery and Blinders is it. So Janelle, I'm so thrilled that, that you're taking time. Um, what's happening in your world? Where, where are you today? So today, actually, I'm in Minnesota, my hometown. I'm in Cloquet, Minnesota. Uh, but I am unfortunately here for my grandmother's funeral. She passed away a couple days ago. She was 95 years old. Um, she lived a wonderful life. And so we're just here to celebrate her. Wow. I am so sorry for your loss, Janelle. Thank you. You know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, we lost my mom in May. Um, and this is my mom's mom that just passed. And so I think... I think she was kind of like, you know what? I just don't want to really be here. <laughs> I think she's been kind of on the struggle bus and I think she was ready to go, lived a great life. She was such a great lady. And so it's just been nice to just be up here, be with my aunts, be with my cousins, look at her things, look at pictures, talk about memories, you know, all the, all the good parts. Remember all the good stuff. I know in, in chapter seven of bravery and blinders, uh, you go to a place that is so real and so raw. Uh, I couldn't get through it. And I, I was <laughs> going to try and um, just share uh, from your book. But probably what I, what I, I, I want to go here, Greg, for a minute, because this, this really says it all. I'm so fortunate that I had healed my relationship with your mom, because had I not, I can't, even imagine how hard it would have been to lose her and have any negativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that for me was a moment of why to face the things we fear. So what's it been like for you to face fears? Can you go there with us? Absolutely. Um, those are the things that form our character. I mean, those are the things that... I mean, when we can really have the intestinal fortitude to really face those things head on, that's what gives us, that's what molds us. That's what shapes us. And that's ultimately what I feel allows us to give back and help other people do the same and be there for those people, our, our loved ones and our close friends and people in our life that need a little lift or need, need to lean on our strength. Um, when we face those fears, it just shows that it can be done and it will give other people hope and help them be strong in the face of their fears. And I think it's just something that just can grow exponentially and make the world a better place, to be honest. That's so true. Back over to chapter four for a minute. And I'm going chapter by chapter because this is the type of book that is a manual. And I'm talking to moms, <laughs> you know, all over our county and they're saying, Val, I really appreciate that you talk about our important work at home on the home front. And I'm doing, I chose to step back. You know, I had one mom on as a special guest a few weeks ago, and she said, I stepped back. I'm an educated woman, but I decided to come home and really own it. And she said, I was on Indeed the other day and looking at available jobs. And she said, you know, it's like I'm a CEO. I'm a mom manager, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much involved yep. in that. And you are, you are like the superhero uh, of accomplishing <laughs> this and, and trailblazing and owning it. And chapter four, write it down. You're going to love it for anybody that one is ready to address mindset and procrastination. Mm -hmm. The biggest, one of the biggest um, setbacks I had or one of the biggest, I guess, challenges that I faced was myself <laughs> and my own mind and my own, 
you know, just, and I have to say that, um, this, this, I'm not there. I mean, it's, it's a lifelong journey to keep working on it, but I have to say the way we've leveled up and the things we've been able to do, I've actually been able to take those skills and it's really been helping me get things done. Um, I'm just working on it every day and that's all we can do. You can't expect perfection. You're never going to, you're never going to never procrastinate anything else ever again in your life. Like that's just not going to work. Um, that expectation is just unrealistic, but I think making progress and I'm seeing progress in my own life of getting better and better. And that make that's make me happy. And that's all I'm going to ask of myself. And that's all any of us can ask of ourselves. Well, on page 67, you say, in my mind, successful people go to bed fairly early, unless there's some big project going on, get up fairly early, make the bed every day, tidy up the house with a morning routine and do tasks as they come during the day. I would ask myself, would a successful person do this and then act accordingly? It was a new control. If I make a list and check everything off of it, I have just completely controlled my day because... I told, sorry, (laughs) I told myself what kind of day I'm going to have when I set the tone with my bed making routine. Okay, this Mm -hmm. is so good. It's such solid advice that in a world where we feel like we don't have a lot of control, that it really starts with you and it's as simple as making a choice in the morning. So who did you look to when you kind of decided to make game-changing changes in your life? Who were you looking to? Well, I know that there has been, there was that general or somebody who was giving like a a, um, graduation speech or something. And he talked about making the bed, but I actually have never listened to that. I I've seen the headline of it and I've seen that post, but I've actually never really listened to that speech, which is kind of funny. I probably should listen to it, but, um, we, we actually, you know what, making the bed really started. This is kind of funny, but um, we were selling our house. And, you know, when you're selling your house, you have to be able to show your house. And I had, you know, five kids and, you know, not everybody was living at home, but it was still a little bit chaotic. We still had kids in school and this and that. And so I had to, I was almost forced to make my bed every day because that was just one thing I wouldn't have to do to quickly tidy up before we would have to do a house showing just in case you just never know when they're going to pop up. So I, I, we started doing it then. So this was several years ago, probably seven years ago, eight, six years ago. And it just kind of got me in the habit. And I started realizing when I was doing that, I was like, I've heard this before, but now that I'm putting into practice, this actually works. And I really do enjoy coming into my room at the end of the day and having this be my one space that is just mine and it's tidy and my bed looks pretty. I just enjoy it. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep going with it. And my husband got on board and he's like, yeah, I really like making the bed every day too. And so it was kind of the rule between the two of us was last out, you know, who was ever the last out. Like I would be on a, have to go fly early in the morning. I'd have to be up at three and out the door by four. So obviously he's not up and out the door by four on a normal day. So he was last out. I'd come home and sure enough, he'd made the bed. The pillows maybe weren't exactly how I would have put them, but pretty <laughs> close, you know, pretty close. I try not to overwhelm with the pillows, but we have several. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just, it just really started making sense. And everything just kind of felt better by doing that. It was kind of a forced thing at first. And then we just really enjoyed it and just set it a roll with it. And everything kind of fell into place after that. And what's the deal with guys not appreciating pillows on the bed I mean it's just it's like beautiful flowers Greg do you want to take a stab at that one (laughs) (laughs) why don't you like the pillows Greg Uh, what's wrong with the pillows I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I'm just smiling listening to Janelle here because uh, I'll just tell you men are such losers okay we just are compared to you guys (laughs) We're a bunch of simple, we're a bunch of you know, losers simple. compared to you guys. <laughs> but it sounds funny though. Seriously, Janelle, you're touching on such an important point. And I read I read so closely both of your books. You're touching on such an important point that we face, all of us face every day. Believe it or not, Janelle, you will laugh. 
But my biggest weakness is procrastination. Imagine mm -hmm. that. And when you just mentioned that, and you've mentioned it in your previous books, that the job's never done. Every single day, if we are of healthy mind and spirit, we work on stuff. We're not perfect. We work on stuff. We're aware that we just need to work on stuff. I, I, I always uh, uh, relay it to Val as just sharpening the saw. Sharpening the saw every day. We try to get better. We know we're flawed. Um, but it sounds funny. I'll, I'll just leave off with this because I'm really enjoying uh, this kitchen table conversation between Val and Janelle Lamb. Seriously, this is great stuff. I'll leave it off with this. Uh, as a guy, as a man, uh, my life changed when I started taking out the garbage. Uh, and that was about, I'm guessing, mm. about a year ago. <laughs> and it sounds funny, but I've said before. I believe men can be caring, caring, but not thoughtful. Uh, things like taking out the garbage, uh, making coffee for your wife, maybe babysitting the kids if you can handle them for a couple of hours. That's caring. Uh, that, that is being thoughtful. Thoughtful. Men are caring in that they look out for their wives, their families. But the thoughtful thing, honestly, is what I honestly, I honestly only learned in the last year or two. Um, and so if anything, I'm working on that to be more thoughtful. I'm sharpening the saw every day. Uh, and I think both of the people I'm talking to on this radio show do exactly the same thing. So that's all I got on the men front there, Val. <laughs> uh, Janelle. On page 68, so for those of you listening, uh, we are in chapter four still. Now, another mindset that truly helped me, which goes to my last point, is that I really feel that God cannot bless us with more unless we are taking care of what we currently have. I've lived in some pretty dumpy houses and apartments of the last 30 years, so uh, year or so. So as we struggled along through life, but I always had this sense that the Lord would bless us if I took care of what I had in the moment. Maybe my car wasn't my dream car, but I could still keep it clean. Maybe my kitchen cabinets were dark brown and permanently sticky. That's a real thing. That but is I, a real thing. <laughs> but I could keep my kitchen clean. Talk about that because that's so relatable that's so where we all are and doing that inventory of what we have like how did you come up with that well because I just I was I, I was kind of always one of these people that you know I grew up in a I grew up in a beautiful clean home my my mother was amazing at that she and I this is my stepmother I'm, I'm referring to at this point she you know my my late uh, like we got married when I was nine. So the time from I was like nine all the way until I got all the way through high school and left home. She was a different personality than me. She would keep, she was a, we would call her, she's a picker. So all day long, she's just tidying. Like as she walks through the room, she takes what doesn't belong and puts it where it goes. As she goes to the next thing, she's constant state of cleaning. I am the opposite. I would let things get totally out of control and then spend like four hours just doing like this intense turbo clean and get it all perfect and then completely stop for a day and a half and it would get all destroyed again and then I'd spend three hours just cleaning it all up I was like a all or nothing type mentality <laughs> it's like the kind of two opposites of cleaning cleaning you know mm -hmm. mindsets and so I just was I always wished I could be like that I wish I could always like every time I would walk into my home as a young kid and a teenager the kitchen was clean always the floors were swept. The dishes were done. Everything was put away. We'd have our little stacks of things that we needed to take and everything else was tidy. And I always wanted to be like that. And, you know, when you live in like these cheap apartments, when you're first getting going, which oh, those are the best years. Are they not just the best years? <laughs> those times when you've got, we, I remember one apartment we lived in had this orange indoor outdoor carpet. And this is in like 1994, <laughs> probably 1995 and this carpet was from like 1955 like it was the worst and this orange indoor outdoor carpet and I thought what can I do about this carpet we're just in this tiny apartment it had yellow appliances it didn't have a dryer I had to hang my laundry outside to dry which in Arizona really isn't a problem it dries in about two and a half seconds <laughs> but 
um, I just thought, how can I make this more a home and more mm. pleasant? You know, this carpet is not. And so I went and got a piece. I bought a, just a piece of carpet and just laid it over the top and just made, made my space into a place that I enjoyed. Even if it was just a raw cut piece of carpet on top of this scratchy orange indoor outdoor carpet in this apartment, like that kind of stuff. And just keeping it tidy, even though it was never going to be like aesthetically pleasing or beautiful, at least it could be tidy and I could put my own spin on it. And that is what helped me feel like I was taking care of my space. Um, and I thought, you know, we're not going to live at this apartment forever. It's okay. It's, we're just on a journey and it's fine. And that's what I would tell myself. And that's what got me through a lot of that, that time where I was like, I just know that we will be blessed. We will be blessed for, for taking good stewardship over what the Lord has given us this far. And you never know like what that must have felt like to your husband. Did you ever ask him what it felt like to come home to that space you were creating? And did he ever give you feedback on that? You know, I think, I think for the most part, men take that kind of stuff for granted. The stuff I do is always mostly for me, but I know that he does appreciate like when I was younger and I would walk into my parents' house and it was, it was always smelling good and it was always tidy and it was always, you know, decorated. And I know he appreciates that. It's not probably something he would do if I wasn't there. (laughs) He wouldn't, (laughs) but you know, he's a dude, but um, yeah, I think he, he always appreciates the house feeling like a home. Now, don't get me wrong. He has done plenty of complaining about <laughs> the amount of boxes I have of Christmas decor or, you know, different, you know, aspects like that. He's kind of like, this is, this is overkill. This is too much. But I'm like, look, I said, this is how I make our house a home. Mm-hmm. And this is how just this is just our thing so this is what I do and he gets it he gets it that it makes me happy and you know as long as I don't go draining the savings account to buy you know too much stuff I think he's fine with it and he he enjoys the he enjoys the peace that it brings when you walk into a clean good smelling beautiful space and doesn't it make you feel great to to know that you've really taken the time and with your heart put in, you know, your blood, sweat and tears into making your nest a happy place, a place where your family can grow and make memories. And I really truly believe that is the most important thing right now in the crazy world that we have is to come home, come back inside and just Mm -hmm. take an inventory of what we've got right now and how special it is. And I love that you talk about, you know, grimy cupboards because it truly is for, for moms at home that have their ducks in a row and they know the world is upside down and crazy and, and everybody just wants to know what should we do? What can we do? Like, that's what it's all about is to, you know, put the blinders on and, or take the blinders off, whichever way you want to look at it. And, Let's get down to business. So, Greg, I want to bring you in here because I'm sure you've got a lot to add. What what do you think about what you're hearing in uh, women taking charge in the home front and making happy nests? Uh, As I say, I'm just really enjoying this conversation. Uh, What I'd let Janelle and you, Val, know is men, good men, always love and appreciate their wives. From the beginning. And I mean from the beginning, meaning even when they were dating. They might not show it again, once again. They can sometimes be caring, but maybe not thoughtful. But I will let both of you know, seriously, uh, a man appreciates it more and more, especially the older he gets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I'm in my 60s now. I joke I'm 64 and a half. Uh, And I have never uh, been with my wife for almost 40 years. Uh, And I've never appreciated her more than even today. And I look back on almost 40 years. And and, and Val, we've talked about this a lot 
uh, on previous episodes. But I look back now and I simply cannot believe what super moms you all are. And as I say, when I joked uh, 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 earlier that my life changed when I started taking out the garbage, it did. Take out the garbage, make the coffee, blah, blah. But that's only in my 60s. I was running around like a crazy person, as all people are, in their 30s and 40s. Uh, I can't even imagine what Janelle and Mark's schedule is like these days. But uh, in the end, it just comes down. It just comes down to the home front, including for men. There has been statistics, many statistics over the years that the happiest people in the world are married men who have a great home front. So whether you folks, folks, Val and Janelle, the younger generation, uh, know it or not. Your husbands love you and they really appreciate you and they will appreciate you more and more the older they get. So back to you on that one, uh, my two moms on radio here. (laughs) Well, Greg, you just plug your ears for a second um, because Greg's known your husband, Sheriff Mark Lamb, for a couple years. But Mm -hmm. I'm curious, Janelle, like... uh, I, I believe you and Greg met at a Charlie Kirk event and a Carrie Lake rally. Like, what did you think mm-hmm. of this guy and what his deal is? I mean, he's got a lot of wisdom, but what's his deal? What do you think? I think that he really cares about people. And I think he is such a supportive guy. Honestly, I just think that he is, he would just do anything for anybody. He is just such, I can see his servant heart. That's what I see when I see Greg. He definitely has a servant heart. And he's he's just a joyful person. You can see that he's just a joyful, happy person. I I think the same. You've you've summed it up beautifully. And he's not afraid. You know, just like your husband's brand of I'm not afraid. Uh that's like Greg too. And he he's amazing to have around. He's got a lot of strength and wisdom and uh, he challenges people, you know, even on our broadcasts, he gives a different perspective and the importance of that reminds me when my husband takes the garbage out, don't just expect it, but make eye contact and say, Hey, thanks husband for doing that because it's a team, whether you're taking the trash out or you're calling these politicians in Washington DC to count Uh, you know what? It takes a strong team. So would you talk about that? Go inside your marriage and just be brutally honest with us in what it's like to be a part of the team you're in. So I am so, so grateful that I have such a great teammate, to be honest. I mean, we really set our roles out right away. Like first thing, one of the first things we did, we set, we set our expectations and we let the other person know what we expected of ourselves to be doing and what we expected of the other person to be doing, which I think was actually pretty emotionally mature for a 20 and 22 year old (laughs) that we're just getting this thing started. (laughs) Like I'm pretty proud of us for that, even at such a young age, but we really said, and my husband always has this thing that he'll tell friends and different people that are like, we just told our son who just got married. Well, he'll say, if you don't want to do something in your, like in your household, if you're like, say, we're telling our son this as an, just as an example, if you don't want to be the laundry folder of the family, don't start folding the laundry every time when you first start out, because that's going to set an unreasonable expectation. Now I'm not saying never fold the laundry. I'm just saying like, don't do something you hate just to impress the other person to get started because then they're going to think, Oh, he's going to just fold the laundry. And then it's, you then you kind of don't want to say I don't like to do it anymore. And then all this resentment builds up. No, set a clear idea of what you expect from yourself, what you expect of your partner, and then just stick to it. That's all you have to do. Just set the expectations and stick to it. And those things should be discussed probably before you actually tie the knot. So that you can if you if it's maybe something you don't want to do, or it's not the right expectations for you, you can say, ah, maybe we're not good for each other but if you can get that stuff mapped out especially when you talk about you know you don't always know 
how it's going to be when you have kids, you know, you could end up with special needs kids or things could be different than you think, but you had a sense of the person and what kind of things that they are wanting to contribute to this relationship. And I think when you have two people who really want to contribute the most possible, I think that's really important. Um, so we kind of set our roles out pretty solidly. I, I'm of the mindset personally, and we kind of both are, that it's so important for moms to be home as much as possible. And I'm not saying that because, I mean, I worked outside the home. My daughter is the type where she's like, mom, I got to work. I can't, I get bored. I like the outside stimulation. And so she's, she's a working type of personality. I, on the other hand, I enjoyed being home. It fulfilled me to be home. I liked it. So we set out pretty early on in a very traditional team where I would rather him work a second job. If we needed more money, he would do more work and I would just buckle down at home harder that we, we doubled down on our traditional roles. There's other people who, you know, like I have a friend who she's a nurse and so she'll do her nursing job. She's an RN and she'll just go in on the weekend graveyard shifts where he's home with the kids and she can go and do her weekend graveyard shifts as a nurse. So there's, there's so many ways to work your family. Mm -hmm. You know, moms can have an Etsy store. They can do, you know, I always did haircutting at home to make some extra money. Just, you just figure out what your roles are. And then like a perfect example, like Sunday mornings, we had five little children to get ready, four boys, one daughter. Right. So we had, say we had church at 10 AM. I would get myself up get myself showered and ready, except for not dressed. Cause you know, some little child is going to come <laughs> up and smear you with something or whatever. About an hour before we had to leave, I would have all the clothes laid out on the bed in my room, all the church clothes. I would start putting boys in the tub. We'd start putting kids in the tub, wash them up. I'd hand them off to him. He'd take them over, put them in the clothes, but then we'd walk out the door. Yeah, it was so perfect. I had everything laid out for him. I would do the bathing. He would do the dressing. I'd comb the hair. We'd walk out the door. Everyone's clean. Everyone's ready to go when we're on time. Like that's our kind of teamwork. Um, he was a, he was a really hands-on dad. He was a really, he was more of the, Hey, let's play type dad. And that was awesome. Um, and taught him the work part, but he worked a lot. So he was more about the quality time when he was with them. So we just kind of found our balance, you know, and it adjusts, you know, over the years of where you're at and which stage, but, but that was really where we found balance was help where we could, you know, help each other where we could. And now it's, it's probably a different stage and time in your life. When we look at, you know, the season now and what you're coming into, are there still key elements that he is your rock in a certain way that you just know that because of all these years together, you kind of have like your own language. Oh, absolutely. Like I, now I know what he needs before he even thinks of what it is. <laughs> like I, like for instance, so I came out of town this weekend and he's going to be there for a couple days. Um, and so I just make sure his dry, dry clean is picked up. And turn, you know, the other stuff turned in, um, check the mail, make sure there's snacks in the house, like the stuff that I know he's actually going to eat. Um, <laughs> just that kind of stuff. Just so I leave him and he'll, you know, if he's hungry, he's going to make himself something. Actually, he'll probably go to Taco Bell for being honest, <laughs> but, um, you know, he's perfectly capable of taking care of himself. I do what I can to set it up, you know, as far as, Hey, mm -hmm. laundry's done. Shirts are in the closet, snacks in the cupboard. See you later. And he's like, awesome. See you later. And he's going to be busy and it's, it's going to be great. And he's going to, you know, if something pops off with the kids while I'm gone, he'll handle it. And yeah, we're, we, we're at a, we're at that point now We're we'll be married 29 years this year. So we're pretty much clockwork on, Hey, I need this. You need that. Let's get it done. It doesn't matter where you are in your marriage. Maybe you're listening and you're like, I want to be like that. I highly recommend getting Janelle's two books. If you have to decide between the two, I'm going to say push the buy button on bravery and blinders because it was page one and I, I couldn't put it down. Um, it was, 
it was, I was just connecting, you know, you and I have a lot of parallels, but I think you're going to hear that from your, from your listeners and readers, Mm -hmm. um, as this book becomes just a household book, it's a resource tool. And I say it's in my arsenal as a tool. I meet a lot of moms, uh, in our, in our County and, and across the country who are saying, you know, I know what's going on in the world and I, I, you know, I don't know how to get organized. Uh, you know, maybe there's past issues that I just, I haven't been comfortable dealing with, but I am now. And where do I start? And I want to make, I love my children. I love my husband. I love my country and I want to do my part. I want to start. What advice do you have for them outside of getting your book and reading your book? What, what's some of the best things they can do right now? You know, I think everybody needs to just look deep and deep down in their soul and decide what is it that I can contribute? You know, we all have something to contribute. And if it's like, if you're saying like they want to get involved politically or just, you know, have an eye on what's going on um, and feel like they're making a difference. I mean, of course, you start in your own home. You start with yourself, really. And then you start in your own home. But if you're really looking to make a difference in your community, I mean, getting involved in your kid's school, uh, making sure you know their teacher and you know the kids in their class. I mean, I was always a big, not for my older kids so much because I had the littles. So it was a little bit harder. But with my younger ones, I was like, school mommy all the time. Once my littlest got into kindergarten, I was very involved in school. Um, some, but some moms work and they can't do that. So then you got to figure, you know, what else can you do? Maybe with the extracurriculars that your kids are involved in, or, you know, everyone can, everyone has something to contribute. So you can just take a really good look at what you have going on. What are your interests? What are your strong points? I say this sometimes when I speak to groups, it's like, some people can go knock doors for a candidate. Some people are, can stuff envelopes. Some people can make calls. Some people can run for office. You know, maybe you want to, maybe you're a little scared to think about it, but maybe it's time for you to run for school board, you know, and start with being a, you know, room mom at your kid's school and get to know the administration, get to know the teachers, get to know who your current board is. Um, but there's always something that we contribute. Even if you, even if you want to post online, you know, find a couple accounts that really post things that speak to you and share those things. Start there. I mean, there's just so many things you can do that don't cost any money. They don't require you to get up on stage in front of people. And there's other people who maybe just need to write checks like for candidates, you know, support good candidates financially. You don't want enough doors. You're not comfortable on stage. You don't want to run for anything. Maybe you can write the checks. You know, there's just so many things to do to volunteer. There's, there's really no excuse anymore this day and age with social media and the networking that we're able to do. If you want to do it, you'll find a way to do it and play to your own strengths and your own personality. And that's what's going to make it great because we're all different. So it's all going to get done. What I'm hearing is you are wanted and you are needed. And if uh, you want to get involved and uh, help with our sheriff's wife and his dream of becoming the senator, then you have an invitation. So that is very cool. Absolutely. Greg, why don't you take the last bit of the show and uh, just um, share what's on your heart and close us out this morning? Well, sure. What's on my heart is I love this conversation. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I love the conversation of fellowship, right, Janelle? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Fellowship, uh, comfort ponies, the way I describe my wife, of the crucial role, the crucial role within a marriage team. Uh, the book. Right? Make sure you marry your the years a long time. Uh, I, I would like to actually have Janelle take a few minutes here 
Uh, uh, I'm sure, as we say, I'm sure she heard the news. Uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb announced his candidacy <laughs> for the United States Senate. I did hear like, something it about it. I don't know. It was crazy. <laughs> a dream or something. Uh, as I've said many times to you and your husband, you just amaze me as a couple. Like, I simply can't believe your strength. I can't believe what you have uh, been through being a public, public couple uh, for for. Um, please share with with Val and share with uh, the folks that are going to listen to this. When your when your husband decided he was going to announce, tell us what it's like to have a a a, 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 a quote senator can, candidate as your husband. How did that go, and what has been kind of behind the scenes since Janelle? Well, you know, first of all, I have to quantify this with saying if I did not have a God moment where I was, conf- where it was confirmed to me that this was the absolute 100% right thing to do, we wouldn't be doing it. Um, so you have to, you have to have that moment. And I've talked about this in my books too. You have to have that moment because you won't make it through the hardest parts unless you can look back on that. And remember that and feel that again and know, okay, no, this is where God needs me me to be. This is what we're supposed to be doing, no matter what is crazy going around or on around us. Um, So that number one is what I want people to know is that you have to feel like it's a calling. You really, really, really do. Um, The winning and the losing of it, um, of the race is really a non-issue. It's this race, this being in as a candidate is what we're supposed to be doing. Um, We are going to work our asses off and we have assembled an amazing team. And I don't think I even understood what kind of a team effort and what kind of a heavy lift this was just to get to this point where we're almost a week in to a Senate campaign, a statewide Senate campaign. It's huge. I mean, we worked tirelessly for probably three months just to get to this point. And that's before you're even a candidate. Like, it's crazy. Um, The people we have in place are top notch. I feel like we've been able, by getting in early, we've been able to really secure some of the best of the best. Um, And that's critical. Um, And then just being, our goal is just to be professional and classy and positive and hardworking. And that's kind of how we've approached this whole entire project. Um, But it has been long hours already. Um, I'm gonna be working full-time for the campaign. And when I say full-time, I'm talking really looking at 60 to 80 hour weeks. Um, these are, we're putting in, we're already putting in 16 to 20 hour days, some days, um, just to get to where we need to be in order for him to be able to do his sheriff job effectively, which he will continue to do for the next two years and be a candidate. I have to be like all hands on deck, eyeballs deep into this thing with him in order to keep everything rolling, um, on a, on a family level, on a personal level, on a professional level as a candidate and as a sheriff. And so that's where I come in to kind of, you know, for an example, we, when he's out at a speaking event or doing something like we had country thunder this past weekend, which is a country music festival in our, in our County. Um, He can't be on his phone and he gets a lot of anxiety when he um, feels his texts building up. And so I would take his phone and I would just, you know, delegate every text where they need to be, leave some unread so he could get back to that person. I would address everybody like, so I'm like running his phone, um, just doing all that stuff. Like our workload has probably right now it's probably doubled um, since he announced. Um, I foresee that this, we could go for a triple. We'll probably be tripling what we had going on from last year just to get it all done. So, but you know what? It's okay. We're here for it. We're excited about it. Um, It's fun. We have fun together. We're having fun with our team and we love the people we're out with every day uh, meeting and talking to and getting to know people and working with. So 
it's pretty crazy. I'm not going to lie. It's a whole thing. <laughs> it takes a husband and a wife and you both are inspiring the nation. Janelle, I'm going to let you sign off. Um, it's time to let you go. I want to keep you Thank on your you commitments so today. Much. Sheriff Lamb for Senate.com is where you can yes. get a get a hold of Janelle and Mark and sign up in our county across the country and get involved. It's for God, family, and freedom. Janelle's latest book, Bravery and Blinders, is available on her website, the sheriffswife.com. Thanks, Janelle. Thank you so much, Val. Thank you, Greg. Greg, you're gonna stick around for a minute. Um, I, I want to just recap with you and just kind of summarize today's broadcast in all the areas that we touched on that uh, people should go back and listen to. What were some of your top moments today? Oh, boy, where do I start, Val? Uh, what a fabulous conversation. What a fabulous conversation. Um, you are you are vel- very well known, your brand as a home media mom and the home front and God and family, and freedom, and uh, this was your wheelhouse today, Val Olson, chatting with uh, really one of the most remarkable women I have ever, ever met in my life, and one of the most remarkable couples, husband and wife, that I've ever met in my life. If anyone knew, uh, because the Lambs are very, very public folks, if anyone knew some of the backstories and stuff of what they have gone through, and she touched about it, she touched on it, Val, uh, in both of her books, of being a public figure and the garbage they had to deal with, uh, whether it's social media, uh, trolls, whether it's, I mean, a verifiable stalker. Uh, can you imagine with the celebrity that her husband is? So uh, it was a fabulous, fabulous conversation. The moments for me were really the home front moments, Val, the marriage moments. I've just loved hearing her feedback. I loved hearing your feedback. Uh, if there's a message here uh, that, that, that I see and hope, I really hope takes hold in the country more and more as this wave of, I think, traditionalism uh, overtakes the country, uh, overtakes, uh, just, just makes a comeback in society, shall we say. Uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm given hope listening to the Val Olsons and the Janelle Lambs of the world, two Generation X moms. If there's the message that I continue to get. It- Mary. Greg, we're losing you. Greg, we're losing you. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to go back into the green room and uh, just double check your line, but I'm going to close off our broadcast. It's been a wonderful morning getting to know the Senator's wife, Janelle Lamb, and my trusted co-pilot, Greg Meekin. Of course, you can always visit Greg's website and learn more about Greg. Go on his trending list. See what he's all about. GregMeekin.com.